Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in case you're new here, I'm Sophie Ramos. I create lifestyle and travel videos. So today's video will be quite different from my usual ones. It will be all about my IELTS experience which I took in January 2021. I decided to create this video because while I was preparing for the exam, I couldn't find any recent or updated resources on what to expect given the pandemic. So I hope to help you guys out if you're planning to take the exam this year or have already scheduled it soon. This will be a pretty comprehensive and detailed guide just like all my other vlogs. I will share exactly what test I took and why, my personal tips and reminders, my honest review of the entire IELTS test experience, and lastly, my IELTS band score. So if you're interested to know more about it, make sure to stick till the end of this video because we have quite a lot of ground to cover. First, let's talk about the basics. So what is IELTS? So IELTS stands for International English Language Testing System. This is usually required if you plan to study, migrate, or work abroad in certain countries such as the UK, US, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. The test is used to measure how proficient you are in the English language in the following four areas, which are listening, writing, reading, and speaking. The test is scored from 1 to 9, with 9 being the highest. So there's no real passing score. It really depends on the company or school that's sponsoring you. The duration of the test is a total of 3 hours. The first part is the listening, writing, and reading. So that's 2 and a half hours. And then the speaking part is about 11 to 14 minutes. So usually, you can finish it all in one day with a break in between. So there are two types of IELTS exam. First is academic and second is general training or GT. So the academic are for those who plan to study a postgraduate or undergraduate degree, while the latter are for those who plan to work or study below degree level. So it's best to confirm with the one requiring your exam on which one you have to take. So the main difference between the two is the reading and writing portions while the rest are the same. The writing task requires two essays. For academic, the first essay is more on describing a certain process, table, or chart, while for GT, it's writing a letter. The sources also are quite similar, but the topics are different. So for academic, it usually comes from newspapers, journals, and articles, while for GT, it usually comes from company handbooks and articles as well, but more on general and work topics. I can't tell you which is easier or harder because I only took one exam, but from my research, the academic requires more analysis and comprehension. The price for both exams are the same. Right now, it's 11,300 pesos are about 235 USD. It's definitely an expensive exam and actually the most expensive one I've taken in my whole life. In addition, there are two types of IELTS formats, so you can have it computer-delivered or paper-based. The price is the same for both, it's just the manner in which the first three parts of the exam is delivered. At first, I thought computer-based meant taking it at home, so I thought it was very convenient, but you actually still have to go to a physical testing center to take it. The main difference is that the results of the computer-based is delivered sooner, and also there are more frequent and available exam dates compared to the paper-based. Okay, so why did I take the IELTS? So I took it because it's one of the requirements for my student visa, as I'm going to Australia to study for my master's. There are other English exam options such as TOEFL or Pearson Test of English, but I decided to go for IELTS because it was recommended by my school and it's more popular here in the Philippines. I could have actually taken it elsewhere, but I decided to take it here in the Philippines because I'm more comfortable and I'm more familiar with the place. Here in the Philippines, there are two IELTS host providers, which are IDP and British Council. Both jointly own IELTS, so I'm not sure if there are other host providers, but if you do know others, let me know in the comment section. But so far, from what I know, these are the two ones that are legit. So I booked my exam with British Council because it was recommended to me by my school and also because they had an ongoing promo last December. So they had a 12-12 promo where I got an 800 peso discount, so I paid 10,500. It's honestly not a big discount, but it's better than nothing. To avail of this promo, I could only take the exam January onwards. I couldn't take it in December. I suggest that if you're not in a rush, wait for their promos and follow their Facebook page so that you're updated. I also checked IDP recently and they also have some promos available. So it really depends on when you're planning to take the exam. So the good thing about booking your IELTS exam with the British Council is that aside from the free materials and resources available already on their website, you get to unlock more practical exams and exercises. When I check with IDP, they have similar review materials and review classes. I think that if you're choosing between the two, consider the price and the test venue that's closest to you. If I'm not mistaken, both cover the same areas. So I'll 
I'll flash some of it here. You can also check out their website, which I'll link down below for the complete list of 16 areas that they currently cover here in the Philippines. I booked my test on the British Council website. It was a pretty seamless experience for me. First, you create an account and then you choose the type of exam that you want to take, whether it's academic or GT, computer delivered or paper based. And then a calendar will appear where you can select the date, time and locations available. Once you select your preferred time and location, a slot will be reserved for you and it will be held for about 24 hours until you provide an ID or identification and also your payment. Make sure that the valid ID that you upload is the one that you have on hand because you have to present it on your test date. Payment options are credit card or bank transfer when I booked my exam and I got a confirmation right away via email after I paid through credit card. So make sure that you pay on time because if not, your thought will be cancelled. Since I'm based in Manila, the venue available and nearest to me is their BGC office in Fort Bonifacio. So for my test format, I opted for the computer delivered one because I needed my results faster. I'm also more comfortable and work well with a computer. I read and write faster. I suggest this mode if ever you are techie and you are very comfortable with working with a laptop or computer. I'll discuss more of the advantages of computer delivered over paper based later on when I discuss my tips per section. Now let's move on to the preparation. To be honest, the IELTS is similar to a university entrance exam. It's a type of exam which is a snapshot of your entire knowledge and use of the English language in your whole life so far. It makes use of your current skills, stock knowledge, and vocabulary, but it doesn't mean that you can't prepare for this type of exam. I think that for any examination, you should always do your part and prepare for it, especially if it's as costly as this one. I'll be honest to say that I was tempted to wing this exam because I was really pressed for time, but I didn't want to retake it just to get a better grade because that would mean spending more. So if you're looking for motivation, keep the price in mind. If it doesn't motivate you, it will at least make you feel guilty. I didn't have much time to prepare because I was juggling work, errands, and fixing my school requirements. To be honest, during this time, I was very overwhelmed and could not focus. I only took more or less three days to prepare. I also reviewed on my own because I didn't want to add to the test expense. There are actually a lot of free online study resources that you can use, so I highly suggest that you just do it on your own if you can. There are so many tutorials and lessons on YouTube and other websites that it can actually get quite overwhelming on which to use and where to start. The the review materials I mainly use are from the British Council, their Road to IELTS website, and their IELTS Prep mobile app which you can download on your phone. I think these are more credible and similar to the actual exam because they're the ones administering it. I will include the direct links below in the description box if you want to use them as well. You don't have to book your exam with the British Council in order to get access to these materials. You just have to register using your email. I also attended their free monthly webinars which they host on Zoom. So you can check out their Facebook page or their website for the schedule. When I check, they have at least four every month. These webinars are very informative because they give tips not found on their website and they also have a Q&A portion at the end. The facilitators are very kind and knowledgeable about the IELTS. I remember one being from Singapore, so you also get different perspectives because some of the facilitators are from other countries. I answered almost all the free sample tests available and also watched the videos of the British Council teachers from abroad. They shared a lot of great tips on what to expect on the exam. I also answered this computer simulated exam which has the exact format as the actual exam. So I highly recommend that you guys devote more time in answering these practical exams because they also help you get used to the testing environment, helping you deal with pressure and also managing your time wisely. The sample exams also have an answer key so that you can take note of your errors and you can avoid it from happening in the actual exam. That way you're more conscious and you're more careful of these typical errors that you make and and won't commit them again. If you feel that you're not very proficient in English, I suggest that you take the time to read more in order to expand your vocabulary and understanding. After, you can answer practice exams to get used to the test format and typical questions. On the other hand, if you feel that you're already proficient in English, I think that it's still necessary to prepare. Don't be overconfident because an English exam is still very different from an everyday conversational setting. If you also haven't been studying for quite a while like me, all the more you need to study because you need to get back into the groove and refresh your test taking strategies. Now let's move on to my actual test experience given the pandemic. I'm not so sure if it's the same protocols and guidelines for other countries, but I'm sure there are similarities. I don't have any photo or video footage because I wasn't so sure if it was allowed, so please bear with me as I just narrate it instead. 
I scheduled my exam at 9 a.m. because I'm a morning person and I wanted to get it done early in the day. If you're working, they also have afternoon and evening sessions on some weekends and weekdays. So it's pretty flexible depending on the exam that you are planning to take. Around two days before my exam date, they sent an email with safety reminders. First, it said that you can only proceed if you don't have any flu symptoms or COVID symptoms and that you are fit and you're not under quarantine. It also said that you cannot bring any companion unless you're under the age of 18 and and you always must wear a face shield and a face mask. It also mentioned that there are some items only allowed in the exam room. So these are the following. First is the ID that you uploaded on the website. Second is a photocopy of that ID. Third, protective gloves that you can use. That's optional though. And then fourth is alcohol or hand sanitizer in a clear bottle. And fifth, water in a transparent clear bottle with no label. So they will also be providing a pencil for you when you arrive, but bring your own pen in order to fill out the forms upon entry. Other items I suggest that you bring aside from these are the following. First is an extra ID that you will leave at the reception of the building. And second is a jacket because it can get quite cold. After the test, if you test COVID positive, you have to email them for contract tracing. I hope and pray that that never happens to you guys. The British Council office is actually very easy to find. It's near St. Luke's Hospital and also right in front of a big mercury drug branch, which is a pharmacy here in the Philippines. You can just use ways to find it to minimize the crowds and promote social distancing. They only allow you to enter the building one hour before the first part of your exam and 30 minutes before the speaking portion. I actually had to wait an extra hour because I arrived really early because I was afraid of traffic which is really bad here in Manila. <laughs> Upon entering the lobby, the guards will check for your temperature and ask you to answer a health declaration form. Once you arrive the British Council office, the staff will call you in order to verify your identity and take your photo. They will require you to take out your face shield and mask in order to take your photo but it's very quick. Before they test, they also also ask you to store all your personal belongings like your wallet, phone, or other gadgets in their lockers which they offer for free so don't worry it's secured. While the staff conducts identity checks, for all the test takers, I suggest that you use this time to use the bathroom as many times as possible. The comfort room in the British Council office in BGC is very clean and modern. It's not gross at all, don't worry. While waiting, I also don't suggest that you cram or study anymore. Just take this time to relax and be calm. So my test started on time. I entered this room which was very clean, bright, and very conducive for test taking. The tables and chairs look very new as well. I was seated about 1.5 meters away from the other test taker. We had one empty seat in between us. There's also these box-like partitions on top of the table, so I felt very secure and safe. The headset, mouse, and keyboard were also sanitized beforehand. The chairs though could be more comfortable because it wasn't a desk chair, but it wasn't a monoblock chair either. But but overall, I didn't have any safety or technical issues during the exam. During the exam, there are two proctors called invigilators. They are very strict. They read out the test reminders and conduct identity checks before every section begins. You're allowed to take bathroom breaks, but you're not allowed in the last 10 minutes of a part. I don't really recommend taking a break because the bathroom is quite far from the exam room and it lessens your time to review your answers. So do this prior to entering the room and also don't drink too much water. Now I'll share my personal test taking tips for each part of the exam as well as the reasons why I chose the computer versus the paper based and also why I'm glad that I took this format instead. So the IELTS exam starts with the listening portion which is 30 minutes. You're given enough time before every recording to scan through the questions. So use this time to go through the entire text so you have a general idea of the story or the recording so that it will help you predict the answers later on. Important tip is to check your spelling and read the questions very carefully. Sometimes they only require you a certain number of words, like one or two or three words. So don't exceed that number of words because your answer will be marked incorrect. And use that as a clue of what the answer should be. Another tip is to look at the words right before the blank to know if it's a noun, adjective, or verb. You can also use the words before the answer as clues. For example, if there's a currency already before the blank, then you just have to pay attention and listen for a number to be mentioned in the recording. Another tip is if the word an is before the blank, that means that your answer should start with a vowel. Also make sure that your answers are complete and in the correct form if it's singular or plural so that it won't be marked incorrect. Also make sure to add articles like 
and uh, the or money currencies because without it your answer can be marked incorrect just a personal tip stay focused and don't let your mind wander during this part because the recording will only be played once and not repeated if you get lost at any point just move on to the succeeding number so you won't lose points for those just make an intelligent guess for the questions that you are unsure of because it's not right minus wrong anyways don't leave anything blank don't also write everything that you hear immediately because there are some types of conversations that are confusing where the speakers correct themselves if you answer practice tests you'll have an idea of these types of tricky conversations so make sure to answer those the next portion is reading which is 60 minutes long or an hour from my experience i had enough time to read all the passages and review my answers after there are different reading techniques that i use during this portion so my first tip would be to go through the questions first before reading the passage for fill in the blank type of questions i would just do speed reading i would skim through the text and not read entire thing i wouldn't really comprehend it i would just really fill in the details based on the text for multiple choice type i would really go through the text because a lot of these questions pertain to the details the good thing about computer delivered exam is that you can highlight the text as if you're highlighting a book or a paper so it's very useful because it's highlighted in yellow and you can even make notes on the text so if you're taking the computer delivered i highly suggest that you use this tool so that you can easily go back to the important information and not go through the entire text just to find the answer the highlighting tool is one of the advantages of computer based over paper based because you can't bring an actual highlighter during the exam i think the most challenging and tricky type of question for the reading portion is identifying if a statement is true false or not given these types of questions require more analysis and understanding i would suggest that for these types of questions understand thoroughly read between the lines and check for synonyms if you have ample time to prepare for the ielts i recommend that you read leisurely it doesn't have to be academic or professional articles read on topics that you like or you're interested in personally i love to read fiction and non-fiction and try to do so regularly i think that it will help you develop different reading strategies on various kinds of texts the third portion is writing which is also an hour long so this is actually the part i was dreading the most because it's my weakness whenever i write i spend a long time so 60 minutes is quite short for me to produce two essays as mentioned earlier academic has two sections the first essay has to be at least 150 words and the second one at least 250 words so this is where i spent the most time studying and preparing i would answer a lot of sample exercises and make different essays for different questions I recommend that you do the same if you have the same weakness. For this portion, you have to think and write fast because you need time to also to proofread and grammar check your work afterwards because that's also part of the criteria in grading aside from sentence structure, flow, and word choice. Make sure to also follow the word count required because you'll lose marks if you don't meet the minimum. One of the reasons why I also recommend the computer delivered exam is because you can already see how many words as you type. You don't have to manually counted as compared to the paper based your essay is also much cleaner because you are free from erasures and you can easily revise it and make any corrections if you plan to do the computer based exam just use microsoft word or any word online counter when you do sample tests i think one key in preparing for the ielts is knowing your weak areas or where you struggle so that you'll be able to dedicate more time in improving on those areas so for me it's writing i think you'll be able to identify these weaknesses by answering practice exams. Another advantage of computer base is that you can easily mark the questions you are unsure of and go back to them afterwards. So at the bottom portion of the screen, it's numbered 1 to up to the last number of the test. And you can see if you missed out on any question or you can also check the numbers that you marked early on that you want to go back to. So just a personal tip, don't spend too much time in a particular question. If you're not sure, just go back to it later and mark it. Prioritize the answers and points that you are sure of. I also want to note that for the sit-down portion for the three parts of the exam, wearing a face mask is a must. You have the discretion to wear or not the face shield, which I did not because I was already wearing glasses and without the shield, the screen was much clearer. The face shield also tends to reflect on the computer screen making me dizzy. I actually never felt comfortable wearing a face shield, so I'm really glad that they gave that option for us. Aside from glasses as protection, I already felt safe because I was at a good distance away from other test takers, so wearing a face shield is 
it's really up to you, but face mask is mandatory. Lastly is the fourth part, which is the speaking portion. The first part of my exam ended at 12 noon and then I came back at 3 p.m. after I took my lunch. So you can choose the time for the speaking portion. It's assigned when you book the exam, but usually it's on the same day as your written part. When I arrived, they said that I could start early, so I did because I just wanted to get it over with. The interviewer who conducted it was Filipino. I just entered this room and we were seated face to face. There was a thick acrylic glass in between the both of us and then we were required to still wear a face shield and face mask. I was actually worried that I wouldn't be heard well because I was wearing a mask and a shield but there was a recorder in front of me that was positioned. I think a tip is just to make sure that you project your voice well even if you're wearing a mask so that you're audible. So this part of the exam is more casual and conversational. The best way that you can prepare for the speaking portion is by being familiar with typical questions that will be asked. You can watch sample interviews on YouTube or on the British Council website Site. I would also recommend the IELTS Prep app because they have an option to record yourself and I think it's a great way to practice because you get to listen to how you talk, where you pause, where you make mistakes, and how you can improve. The first part of the speaking portion is a Q&A about yourself. So it can be about your hobbies, your hometown, or living situation. For the second portion, you'll be asked to talk about a general topic with a few follow-up questions for two minutes long. So beforehand, you'll be given one minute in order to gather your thoughts and write some notes on a piece of paper and then afterwards you'll start talking. The interviewer will ask you to stop if ever you reach two minutes already. The third and last part of the Q&A is about the topic that you just discussed so it's more of a question answer type with the interviewer. To be honest, I didn't think I did well for this part of the exam because I tend to speak really fast and blabber when I'm excited and in the zone. I don't know if you guys notice right now. So my tip for this portion is to speak clearly and not too fast but also not too slow. I think the way that they score this part is by the choice of your words to see if you have a wide range of vocabulary, how fluid you converse, and how fast you think on the spot and come up with ideas when they ask you follow-up questions. I don't think they consider body language like your eye contact because it's just being recorded by audio not by video. I think another way that you can practice for this exam is by having a friend or family ask you sample questions so you can simulate the environment. And now I'm going to finally reveal my IELTS band score. So I got an email from British Council two days after my exam that my results were ready and I was so scared to open it because I really didn't know what to expect. I was actually so surprised because it was so fast. They said it's about three to five days but it came even earlier. The physical copy, you actually get one only and it was mailed to me exactly a week after my exam date which for me was pretty fast. So you only get one personal copy but you can request an additional for 250 pesos if it's going to be shipped locally. If abroad, it's 1,400. They can actually also deliver an electronic file to the company or school that's sponsoring you. Just make sure to request it before their cutoff dates every month. So I was actually debating whether or not I wanted to share my IELTS score with you guys because it's quite personal and it's not really something that I share here on my vlog. But I decided to still share it because I think that it would be helpful especially if you guys have an IELTS score in mind. So here are my scores! So I was honestly so happy with my score. I really didn't expect it at all. As expected, my writing score is really the lowest out of all the four areas and I wasn't surprised but at least it wasn't that bad. So I was actually aiming for an overall score of 7 so I'm really grateful for my score and that I don't have to take it again. I'm not sharing this to brag or anything but hopefully to inspire you guys to do well in the IELTS. I think that it's important that before you take the test that you have a score goal in mind so that you can stay motivated and focused. Overall, I had a great IELTS test experience with the British Council. This is not a sponsored post. I really just genuinely wanted to share my honest review of my whole test experience and also wanted to help out future test takers out there, especially during this crazy uncertain time. I wish a video like this existed before I took the test, so I made one instead. On a side note, on my exam date, I came across a lot of negative reviews about the British Council and I kind of panicked because I thought I booked the wrong testing center. but. 
I'm glad that I didn't experience any of it. Everything from the preparation, booking, and the result release, I had a pleasant experience so far. The staff who administered were polite, kind, and professional, and they followed all the safety protocols all throughout the test. The office and the testing room were also very comfortable and clean. So I'm very happy with the outcome and most especially my IELTS band score. Please do take note that since the pandemic is a developing situation, some of these protocols or requirements may change anytime and may not exactly be the same experience as mine. Overall, I highly recommend the British Council if you're ever you're planning to take the IELTS in the future. To end, if there's one final tip that I could share to you guys is that before the exam, make sure to get a good night's rest and sleep so that you are awake, alert, and ready to take on the IELTS. Trust yourself that you can do it because you can. Mentally preparing yourself and taking care of your health is also an important step in test preparation and is as important as studying. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative and helpful. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a like and a comment down below. I would really appreciate it because I spent a lot of time and effort in making this video for you guys. Share this video if you know anyone planning to take the IELTS soon. And if I missed out on anything or you have any more questions, comment it down below and I will answer them there. Hope you guys can subscribe to my channel to follow my new adventure as I study abroad. You can also check out my other travel guides and vlogs after watching this and also follow me on Instagram for more travel photos. Thank you so much for watching guys. Study well and stay safe. I know you can do it. Fighting!